When we take a moment to reflect on how far Cardano has come over the past 12 months, it really helps to put things into perspective. Smart contracts have been live for just over a year. We've recently witnessed a major scaling upgrade, have a vibrant ecosystem full of innovative projects being built or already deployed, are currently experiencing the highest transaction load on the blockchain to date, and yet it's working perfectly. No downtime, no hacks, just fast transaction execution and high user engagement, demonstrating exactly why IOG chose expressiveness and scalability at the back end of the roadmap. As the remainder of the year plays out, we have so much to look forward to. The Cardano Summit with some major announcements set to take place, stablecoins arriving in numbers, the introduction of Lace, truly a Web3 game changer, advancements of Mithril, Hydra, input endorsers, sidechains, and the evolution of the governance framework that will place Cardano in a league of its own. This intro barely scratches the surface. The way things are shaping up right now in terms of the developments occurring in Cardano means that the inevitability couldn't be clearer. As its fiercest competitors begin to fade away as a result of their poor design decisions, heads are being turned, and when a system works this perfectly, while remaining true to the ideals of blockchain technology, there will soon come a turning point where everyone has to take note. Welcome back for today's installment of Cardano Insights, where we track the all-important developments at the very pulse of Cardano and its ecosystem. So let's get straight into it. So first up today, we go to the developments surrounding Cardano's OG DEX, a project we've been tracking closely on Cardano Insights, who yesterday confirmed the conclusion of their V2 update. If you remember, Musisop's road to V2 included the launch of their new website and the introduction of liquidity pools as they move from being an orderbook DEX to the hybrid model that delivers both orderbook and AMM style trading options. So the third and final piece to complete the MuseSwap Hybrid Dex update is now live as they've now enabled yield farming. Users can now provide liquidity, earn passive income against their Cardano tokens, and in addition, in this update, they also reminded the community that owners of the Hungry Cow NFTs will also enjoy boosted yield farming rewards. Currently, they have over 10 farms available, some offering over 250% in yield opportunities. The completion of Musiswap's V2 upgrade means that they now join the other four Cardano DEXs with a yield farm offering, which will go a long way in enabling it to compete on all fronts in terms of maintaining and improving its user activity. Currently, according to DeFi Llama, Musiswap sits in full position in terms of TVL, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of growth we see in this respect over the coming weeks and months as more users lock in their liquidity. As highlighted on the majority of my coverage of this project, I'm excited to see what MusiSwap bring to the table next. They've built up quite the reputation for a heads down approach when it comes to development, often surprising the wider community with announcements seemingly coming out of the blue. In this yield farming announcement, they did also allude to the fact that even more updates are coming soon. Could it possibly be the NFT bond marketplace they mentioned a month or so back? I guess we have to wait and see, but as always, we'll be sure to keep on top of all things Muesli as and when further developments materialise. For now, congrats on the V2 update, and I'm glad we have such a dedicated team of builders consistently contributing to the evolution of Cardano's DeFi ecosystem. Now, it's been a minute since we checked in on AA to Finance, the peer-to-peer -peer lending and borrowing platform that introduced the innovative NFT bond concept to the Cardano DeFi space. Since going live on Mainnet, the platform has experienced a decent level of user activity, climbing the TVL ranks surpassing both Lending Pond and Fluid tokens in value locked, which currently sits at 1.2 million ADA. Not bad considering the DAP has only been live for just over a month. In a recent update, they confirmed the completion of their second round of governance voting that related to new borrowable asset requests to be introduced to the platform. As you know from previous AA to coverage, only tokens voted in by the community can be used for lending and borrowing. This recent round included the introduction of Nmaker, Kopi, Society and Empower tokens to the ever-growing list of borrowable assets. It's great to see AADA's governance implementation in action and how the team are determined to empower the community to guide its development. Today they also gave us this update welcoming MinSwap, World Mobile Token and Liquid Finance to the Collateral family on the AADA Finance DAP. Now users can use the mentioned tokens as collateral when building out their loan requests and are no longer limited to just AADA or AADA tokens in this respect. In addition, the team at AADA also gave us this sneak peek to a development currently in the works that should be introduced to the platform very soon. As you can see in this screenshot, we have both options to borrow and lend. If you're familiar with the AADA DAP, you'll know that currently you can only make borrow requests. Once this update rolls out, users will have the option to create both borrow or lending requests, which will go a long way to further increase the activity on the dApp as this added functionality will improve both the fluidity and volume of market matching. There really is so much more to come from AADA Finance. 
the remainder of the year, they'll continue to improve the user experience and functionality of what is the first version of the protocol. We'll also see the development of the NFT bond marketplace integrated within the DAP, which is sure to spark the emergence of the NFT bond secondary marketplace, as users will have the ability to trade loan bonds prior to liquidation, the impact of which we've covered in some detail in previous episodes. 2023, as I understand it from the team's Telegram updates, will be focused towards the development of V2, where pooled lending will be introduced, which is likely to be the most impactful feature in terms of user growth. As always, we'll continue to track the progress of this project closely, we've already brought so much to the Cardano ecosystem. Next up, and today we got some big news coming out of Genius X, who announced that the Genius X Launchpad testnet will go live on November 1st. Genius X is determined to become the most powerful accelerator in the Cardano ecosystem, assisting early stage startup projects with speed, scale, and market edge. The Genius X Launchpad will be the first KYC compliant smart contract based token distribution protocol on Cardano. Brought to us by the team behind the Genius Yield Dex, this web free business accelerator and launchpad for fully vetted early stage startups is on a mission to create a more decentralized and inclusive web free future built by the brightest minds utilizing blockchain technology. The program helps ambitious founders turn their vision into reality by building impactful and scalable solutions, leveraging all the benefits presented by blockchain technology. Genius X will accelerate promising startups by providing advisory support in areas such as marketing, business strategy, token design, and fundraising, providing them with the guidance and tools necessary to become successful in the Cardano ecosystem. The first projects that have been selected in this accelerator program based on their minimum viable products and talented founders include Reach Metaverse, Iagon, Cardahub, Fluid Tokens, and Cardano Feed to name but a few. Projects building on Cardano can apply to become a member of the accelerator program directly through the GeniusX website. So in terms of the Launchpad testnet, to incentivize initial participation, 100,000 GenZX tokens will be distributed to testers of the platform and testing is open to anyone who wishes to participate. For more information relating to the testnet launch, how to participate, and for more on Genius X, check the article linked in the description below. Now to a project that's featured on a fairly regular basis in recent weeks, and the updates just keep coming. Mercury Chat, the wallet to wallet messaging service, last week announced the introduction of the Town Square feature. This is an open chat server available to everyone using the Mercury Chat service. Almost like a Discord style interface, users can simply click on the Town Square icon in the Mercury Chat app and enter the discussion along with all other Cardano Mercury Chat users in one big Cardano conversation. MercuryChat have also enabled group messaging. By simply selecting multiple wallet addresses or ADA handles, you can now use the service to message en masse. In addition, they've also integrated a scan prevention system and security bot to keep their users safe as more and more users are using the MercuryChat service to negotiate NFT sales. This represents a great move to protect its users from known or potential scammers. Further to this, today they also announced yet another feature update, along with the Town Square community chat introduced last week, Mercury Chat users can now create their own sub-community groups for more specific community-focused conversation. Whilst the customizable options for editing the community groups at present are limited, this is going to be built out over the coming weeks, so if you haven't already, go give it a try, linked in the description below. Next we go to a project we covered back in September, with their mainnet launch now imminent, which from my understanding will take place at some point in November. Let's check in on the progress surrounding Indigo Protocol, who intend on introducing synthetic ASICs and stablecoins to the Cardano ecosystem. Late September, they announced the Indigo DAO Kickstart campaign, which has been designed to bring awareness and grow the community into what will become the Indigo DAO, helping to ensure that the DAO is prepared from day one of the protocol's launch to manage the future of Indigo and its ecosystem. The Indigo DAO Kickstart campaign includes five off-chain governance temperature checks submitted through the Indigo Governance Forum, which commenced on October 3rd. On a weekly basis, DAO members have been discussing and voting on specific launch-ready features of the Indigo protocol, as well as the governance structures that will sustain the protocol for years to come. The DAO campaign has already been responsible for the creation of the DAO constitution, the Indigo Foundation and Indigo DAO voting procedures. The final two phases of the campaign include the voting on initial I assets that are to be made available at the launch, which is currently in the process and runs through October 24th to the 28th. The final phase, the Indigo launch proposal, which will take place between October 31st to November 4th. Yesterday, Indigo Protocol provided this update with regards to the fourth phase of their DAO Kickstart initiative relating to the I assets to be made available at launch. They confirmed the Indigo DAO will ratify the creation of IUSD via the I asset temperature check. 
iUSD will be the first Cardano stablecoin solution with the launch of the Indigo protocol. Join the discussion through the 25th of October and prepare for voting on the 26th. If we head on over to the Indigo Asset Proposal page, you can see the selected assets being put forward are iUSD, a stablecoin, iBTC and iEthereum. Whilst the long-term goal of Indigo is to have hundreds if not thousands of I assets, due to the unknown variables and technical limitations with respect to the launch, the assets being made available will be initially restricted to just three. So there you have it, Indigo are claiming it will be IUSD that we can consider the first stablecoin coming to the Cardano ecosystem. This still remains to be seen, but in terms of the progress surrounding Indigo, it seems they are now extremely close to confirming the November launch date, which should be communicated after the outcome of the launch proposal on November 4th. Finally today, and you know how we like to shed light on community developers who are adding great value to our ecosystem with their efforts in building the tools, infrastructure and introducing new programming languages that improves the developer experience. Long term, it's going to be thanks to efforts like this that will lead to the greater adoption of the Cardano blockchain from both a developer and user perspective. Here Mikhail from Harmonic stated, I cannot describe how excited I am to finally announce that the first Cardano smart contract, entirely written, compiled and serialized, only using TypeScript, is now working on the Cardano pre-production testnet. This represents a pretty significant development. Being able to create Cardano smart contracts using TypeScript, an extension to JavaScript, opens up a whole host of opportunities for new developers to enter our ecosystem, in addition to further supporting those already here with more flexible options when it comes to building on the Cardano blockchain. Whilst many outside of the Cardano ecosystem still believe you can only code in Haskell on Cardano, here we have yet another example proving this narrative is just a myth. So that's it for today's installment of Cardano Insights as we keep track of the developments and continue to spread those positive Cardano vibes. If you found value in the content and want to help the channel scale Basho style, then please be sure to comment, share, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell, which is the best way you can help support the channel. We'll be back soon with your daily roundup. Until then, thanks for watching, have a great day and as always, keep it Cardano.